So one thing that all scientists do is search for questions and answers and throughout this process they come up with hypotheses that they try to prove or disprove and I think we can actually learn a lot from this scientific process of note-taking as I believe that throughout our lives we actually do a lot of experiments that we don't take dedicated notes for. So for example if you're decluttering your house how does that affect your life or if you're trying to learn a new skill what kind of insight that you have during the way of learning this new skill. So if you have any question you're trying to answer or any experiment you're trying to implement into your life, I think these three scientific methods of note-taking could really help you or guide you along this journaling method. So I'm a third year PhD student right now and I've learned a lot throughout my PhD process about note-taking and journaling in general. And the first skill I really learned is the idea of experiment logging. So within science what you do is you record all your experiments successful or not and all the questions that you pose and the answers that you seek and then you note down what you learned from each of these experiments and I think this can be really valuable because usually we only remember it in our real lives whenever we had successes but we actually don't learn so much from our failures and the part of learning from your failures in science is almost the most important because you can learn so much more from your failures than from your successes is. So in general for this experiment logging the idea what you do is for each experiment that you make is you write down these sections. So you write down the hypothesis, methods, results and conclusions. And to translate this for example to a real life experiment is when you're trying to learn a new skill in 30 days. For example neuroscience you want to learn as much about the brain in 30 days. You would write down your hypothesis to how you think this would go, what you think you would learn, what you think you would gain from this skill acquisition. You would write down your methods, how you think you're gonna learn as much as possible about the brain in 30 days and you would write down your results. But then in the end you would also write down your conclusions. So actually how you you found that you did after these 30 days and how you found that you went about it. Uh, you can do this in several ways so the way I usually do it is I have a dedicated lab notebook that is always lying in my office but I also have a digital kind of second brain or a digital notebook and that for me is in Notion but there are many apps that you can use and I will list some of them here and all of them work quite similar. The only thing is that you just have a few dedicated places where you can write down these thoughts about experiments that you conducted. So the second part of experiment logging is the brain dump. So this is also something that I really learned to do during my PhD and this is whenever you sit down for a full work day or at the end of a work day you kind of dump all the information that you have in your brain about the experiment that you're considering. So these are usually to do's that I think I need to do, doubts I have about the experiment that I'm gonna do, what I think throughout that day I will learn or kind of what I have to consider and also a lot of times I write down what I think can go wrong and by considering what I think can go wrong during the experiment I'm already considering ideas or hypotheses about what would be the following up steps if that thing indeed goes wrong and I just dump that all down in the morning for about five minutes so in general I would set a dedicated time to do this and I think a natural time is or the morning or the evening but if you have another time for example a coffee break that you can do this this is also so fine of course and then if you want to take it one step further you can also visually organize them so or in colors or kind of create these type of brain map and then through these visual maps you can kind of see the connection between different ideas and between different problems that you're currently having and lastly something that I learned during my PhD which I found really useful actually in daily life is the idea of resource logging so the idea of resource documentation or resource logging is that throughout any learning process Process, you log or take a record of all the resources that you use and this is mainly because at the end of learning something you usually forget what you've used to get there and research logging can be anything so it can be YouTube videos that you watch it can be papers that you read it can even be people that you talk to but to have a dedicated place where you note down all of these resources and one added benefit of this is that you can usually share this resource then with anyone else that is trying to learn the same skill as you or give them a dedicated pathway
way that you've used to learn this skill. And I think this just makes you a really nice person for sharing this resource. But it's also, at least in my view, really rewarding to have something that you can share to other people to get to the place that you are at currently. So usually I keep this resource database, for example, for neuroscience, I have one dedicated database on Notion that I will share at some point. And also I gave it actually stars for different resources that I used to see how useful I found them. So some of them I give five stars and others two to differentiate between their usefulness. So the second step that I learned or the second stage in the scientific writing process or journaling process is this idea of continuous logging. Uh, so the idea of continuous logging is that you keep writing down thoughts you have about that experiment as you are conducting it. And this is really because as you are conducting different types of experiments, you actually come up with ideas throughout the experiments that you forget if you don't immediately note them down. So the first part then of this is to have this real-time idea capture. As soon as you have ideas, write these ideas down, whether you're on a walk or during work or even during cooking. Don't wait for a dedicated time, but just write them down immediately. And this is really because you forget these ideas and also because usually when you're actually not working, the best ideas come to you. So for me, this is usually when I'm on a bicycle and when I'm riding through the city, I actually come up with quite some ideas about how to solve some of the problems that I'm currently having. And the way to do this is you can use a mobile phone app. I find as you have your phone usually on you, it's the easiest way. And you just take a quick voice note or you do the dictate function such that it's immediately transferred to text. The idea behind this is really to have this incremental insight building. So I really truly believe that a thousand tiny ideas will eventually lead you to your one big idea. But without capturing these thousand tiny ideas first, you won't be able to capture the big idea. So usually these tiny ideas pop up throughout the day and you want to note them all down and also to see if you can relate them into larger, bigger concepts. So one thing I'm experimenting with also currently is to have these dedicated pockets notebooks for an experiment or for a problem that I'm working on. So oftentimes I have this larger encompassing problem. So for example, how does the brain work? And this is a problem that will probably continue to haunt me throughout the next coming years. So you just need a tiny notebook for this. And also it, I find that to have different notebooks for different problems is really nice. The only thing I do want to warn you about is that I'm personally quite messy and I do find it hard to keep them all like clean and not to have overlapping ideas in different notebooks but I think that's also okay that's also part of the process of learning of how you like to journal and how you like to write about problems. So the last thing that I learned in scientific note-taking or scientific journaling is this idea of having reflection moments or weekly reflection in my case and that's really to come back to all the notes you've taken throughout the week and to combine them into one coherent framework and also to pick out the ideas that you really like. So a lot of times when we're journaling, at least in my case, I kind of forget what I journaled about. And if I don't revisit it, these ideas will just be forgotten, basically. So it's nice to have a time at the end of the week, for example, to transfer all your ideas from various mediums into a consolidated log and to regularly review and update your logbook to reinforce learning, for example, identify patterns and track your own growth. So I think this reflection moment, you can do it as long or as short as you want to. And I usually do it before I meet my professor because usually at that time I need to tell him all the results and ideas that I had and I find it really useful to about an hour before the meeting go through all of the work that I've made and all the ideas that I came up with and also to discuss maybe some of the worries or some of the troubles that I faced. So you would want to summarize some key insights and action points from the week to guide also your future experiments and future logs. So what do you want to take to the next week and also go over some of the ideas that you really like and maybe reflect on those a little bit. And also a big thing I want to say is don't cross out any of the previous ideas that you have that you currently don't like. Because I find often that as you change yourself throughout time, if you go back to some really old notebooks, it's actually really nice to see some of the thoughts you were having. And sometimes these thoughts are actually more valuable at this moment than you estimated them to be at the previous moments. And lastly, 
as I already said. So I share a lot of the ideas that I had about experiments. And I do think this process of sharing and reflecting together with another person is actually really nice. And if you're doing experiments in real life about <laughs> real problems and not about scientific problems, of course, this doesn't have to be your professor, as I mentioned, but it can, for example, also be your partner or a friend that is working on the same type of problems or doing the same type of life experiments as you are doing. And I think reflecting together about solutions that you can probably implement in the next week or how to go about your next set of experiments or how to face some problems you're having. It's actually really nice and can give you another set of eyes to review these problems. So as I've gone through my scientific journey, I really noticed that some of the skills that I learned in science are now transferring to daily life. And this is one of the ones that I noticed. But I'm really curious if you are something else besides a scientist, if you've noticed that some of the skills that you learned in your day job are transferring to real time or to your real life and if some of these skills that you found are transferable to parts that you didn't expect them to be transferable to. So if you have such a skill I would love to know it so please put it down below and also let me know what you think about this journaling method and otherwise see you next week. Bye!